grooving with the smoothest DJ. DJ D Dub, Groove Nation. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Boy, I told you I'm a beast. Feel like David and the lion in the streets. Stay humble as I can be. But devil, you don't want no problems. I go beast. In the cage, but homie, I got the keys to the gate, so I'm about to break free. Break, break. Got a lot of dreams on my plate, like Jordan, man, I was built for the game. You ain't gonna break me. Break, I break. keep on giving till you had enough. Had enough me yeah. and AJ got the magic touch. Pitch it to me, got your better up. Hey, it's DJ Dub. Dub. God never does another thing for me. I promise he's already done enough. That was the answer they told Michael Jackson when he was asking who's What's up, good people? It's your boy, bro, Troy. We're back at it for another episode of the Bro Code Show. Hold on. Another one, right? Real quick, this one right here, we got the man, the myth, the legend. You have seen us with him in several occasions, whether that be at the dinner table at Second Empire, holler the chef, got to holler that chef real quick, right? Or at the parade, right? We, we got a chance to lead the parade together. It's Dr. Terrence Ruth. Some of you guys may have even voted for him too. Yeah, not, too, not enough, but we're going to talk about that, right? We definitely going to talk about that. How you doing, Dr. Ruth, man? How you feeling? Good, good, man. It's good to see you again, brother. It's you know, good to see you again. Into, running into you three, um, because there's a consistency between what you produce, what mm. you say, and how you live. So I just appreciate y'all mm. being that example for people to see and observe. Yeah, we appreciate that. That's big words coming from you, man. Thank you, thank you. We celebrate you. Thank you. Yeah, indeed. So we've done this before, but we're going to do it again, man. For those that are listening, for may not know that maybe looking in London or Argentina. I don't know, we gonna speak that into existence. Man, you got 90 seconds or less. Put some respect on your name, man. Let the people know who you are. Yeah, one, I just, uh, I like to, to start with me being a student. Um, mm. So I, I've, I've literally been a student for a very long time. So I, I've, I've gone and be, we got my PhD, my master's and, I, and my bachelor's. Um, I teach at, at NC State in the School of Social Work. Uh, but at the core of me, I'm always a student. So I'm always in a space asking questions, learning, observing. Um, I have a son who just turned nine, um, wife, Kiera. Uh, we are um, glad to be a part of a community that is allowing us to, to live vibrantly in, in, in the spaces we enter. And when I say vibrant, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about mm -hmm. the ability to live healthy and to be our authentic selves. And so um, I'm just happy to be a part of that allows for me to be a thinker, mm. to be a student, and to be able to ask questions. Mm. Allows you to be a thinker, student, and ask questions. I love that. We're definitely going to dig a little deeper into that. Well, so you know, my job is to keep it light, so we have this thing called rapid-fire questions. So as we dive into this conversation, we want to learn a little bit more about Terrence Ruth and do it in 90 seconds or less. So first thing that comes to mind, you ready? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Texting or talking? Texting. Favorite day of the week? Favorite city in the U.S. besides the one you live in? <laughs> New Jersey. Why? My grandmother uh, was raised there, mm. and so there's a core of my being that's mm. in New Jersey. We'll definitely talk about that. Uh-oh, right? uh -oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> 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 North to South. What, what uh, so Neptune Asbury, it's over by the, mm. over by the shore. Okay. Mm. We definitely can get with the grandparents thing as well. We'll talk about that later. Last song you downloaded to your playlist. <laughs> It is uh, J.P. Morton, Benediction, uh, Better. Mm. Favorite holiday? I would have to say Christmas. Why? That's the time that I have the best memories of my father and family. Um, and so it's, it's less about gifts, it's more about the memories of that time as a kid. Mm. I love it. Is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? <laughs> Ah, that's a really good question. <laughs> I would say um, if the ingredients give permission. Ah, I love it. I love it, man. He's a thinker, right? <laughs> hey, that's rapid fire questions with Terrence Ruth, man. Give him a hand of applause. <laughs> Round of applause. I love it. I love it. I'm curious, the, you, you talked a little bit more about uh, being a student. You know, I have to ask, you know, one of the things I always remember about our conversations uh, is you're a reader, right? You love to read, right? What book are you reading now? And tell us about it. Yes, yeah, so I was actually given a book today that I'm excited about. It's called um, 
citizens assembly hmm. citizens assembly uh, give tools and frameworks and case studies where democracy has reached all the way down to the neighborhood level hmm. and it shows it, it demonstrates ways in which people can make decisions at this sort of uh, local governance level okay um, so it's, a, it's an exciting book because it, it um, empowers communities to make tough decisions around local issues, mm. which pivots us from this infatuation with federal. Yeah. And sort of takes us to the area in which our lives are being impacted the most. Sure. Make decisions in that space. It was one thing I've always appreciated about him. Like he's always loved boots on the ground. Like, yeah. uh, I, I feel like if it's, I, like you love the movie Rudy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like the underdog. The, 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 why we, we want to get it how we live. I love that, man. That's, that's still one of the only movies that I, I can't help but tear up. Really? Uh, you like Rudy? I, 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 I can't watch that movie without some water coming out. I mean, it, help, it, 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 defines, it defines power. Mm -hmm. So um, there are several texts, historical texts, that highlight the underdog. You have David mm -hmm. and Goliath, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But the most popular text to ever be pr pr uh, printed and produced is the Bible. Yeah. You know, the Bible. And it tells the story of a very small, insignificant country. If you're just talking about just raw number, mm -hmm. size, mm. you're talking about the Roman Empire. I mean, one of the greatest empires mm. of all time. Mm. And we're talking about a story of a small little, <laughs> small little country mm -hmm. outside of a small group of people. Yeah. Um, with barely an army. Mm -hmm. And um, so that story of sort of grassroots, small, yeah. white world, movies like that redefine what power and the perception of power should be. Mm. Um, and I think that's a lesson we can learn now. Yes. Um, and uh, I run into several individuals in the community that don't know that their mind, their brains, their thoughts, how they, how they perceive things, mm. how they process information um, is empowering. <laughs> it's, that's powerful. Matter of fact, our democracy rests on them sitting in that power. That's right. It literally, our mm -hmm. democracy rests mm -hmm. on the average person mm -hmm. feeling confident about their ability right. to comprehend ideas and then feel strong enough about them to, to place the vote. Mm. And so for me, it's that micro, it's that, it's that small, sure. um, it's, that, it's that grassroots occurrences mm -hmm. um, that often get ignored, but it's, off, it's often the, the, the source of power. And so, Empowering people. Speaking of the mm. author, mm -hmm. do you have, if you could only read from one author, yeah. is there one that mm. this yeah, is that's the person? That's a good one. Um, very, very early in my journey in terms of like really exploring for myself, I used to be a, um, a secondary reader. So I would listen to speakers who talk about reading, but I would never read myself. Um, but when I began to yeah. be, a, be a, a, a direct reader, I would listen to direct source, um, I fell in love with James Baldwin. I, mm -hmm. I, can read, I can read James Baldwin and his words are timely. Mm -hmm. I can read James Baldwin and his concerns are timely. Mm -hmm. I can read James Baldwin and it can touch any group that feel oppressed or feel unheard or feel unseen. Mm -hmm. So he's he's been able to, um, to do that. I think because of his story, he lived in Italy. He mm -hmm. lived in a, another country. So mm -hmm. there's context where he brought, and he's just a brilliant mind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I would have to say James Baldwin is somebody that I think I can sit and read um, and process or listen to his interviews, any of the interviews. He, he's just, he's an amazing thinker. And I think over time, me, Terrence, mm -hmm. have gone to uh, appreciate his, 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 his thoughts and his insights. Mm. What you got, bro, Smith? I mean, we would have went less, so, you know, hey, let's, <laughs> let's get it how we live. <laughs> well, I, we're always in a new place every yeah. time we do these interviews. Tell us a little bit more about the space that we're in right now. Yeah, so this is a great story. So Reed City originally started out as a collective impact model. Mm. It wanted to, and this is at the time where maker spaces were popping up everywhere. Um, so you had uh, WeWorks mm -hmm. was uh, being birthed. You had this whole wave of people. Mm -hmm. This is pre-2020, so people were still mm -hmm. working in the office. People were still, and so this was birthed um, in a response to IBM report about Durham, about mm -hmm. the triangle. Yeah. IBM report said that there are so many nonprofits, but they never work together, so we end up being inefficient. So this, this space was born to be efficient. Mm -hmm. It was born to put the people who are working in these communities mm -hmm. in the same space mm -hmm. so that they can collectively address these very, these issues. Some of the issues that y'all 
working with alternatives. Right. Education, we spend mm-hmm. in education. Mm-hmm. We spend in health. And food. We spend in right. home, food. Mm-hmm. All of them. Mm-hmm. They, they are now housed in one building. Mm. So over the years, they have become a co-working space. Okay. Now what you're seeing in the space you're sitting in now is a co-design space. Mm. So we're, we're building a model here that's unique to us. It's not innovation. Um, Mayor Wu in Boston is creating a similar model where she has an institution that sits parallel to the local government mm-hmm. and they shoot over uh, problems in the city and the community and the institution works on those problems, prototype, mm-hmm. um, and create new ideas from yeah. there. So we're building something similar here. So this will be the same thing for the Triangle. Mm-hmm. So and rather than only seeing value in startups that exist in, in, in uh, Raleigh founded or HQ, and I'm nothing mm-hmm. against those beautiful places. Mm-hmm. We think that there's value in the, the minds and the ideas of people in raw communities. Absolutely. People with, people with a high school degree, people mm-hmm. with no degree, mm-hmm. people that just have raw experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, people Passion. who serve that audience. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and so we felt that, that that's an untapped resource sure. for these brilliant ideas. Mm. And so we're creating a model that will harness those ideas um, to produce solutions that come from the community mm. and identify problems that's, that's, that's stated by the community. Right, exactly. And so the exactly. government works around that. Mm-hmm. Service providers work around that. Mm-hmm. And so what's elevated and what's empowered are the raw voices of people who have the lived experience. Mm-hmm. So True right effectiveness, now, yeah. What you see now, you see mm-hmm. nonprofits, service, service providers going in and providing help and mm-hmm. solutions. Mm-hmm. We feel that that model helps, mm-hmm. but if we are empowering those individuals to define and create now we're getting back to Black Wall Street. Now mm-hmm. we're getting back to something mm-hmm. that we celebrate. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason why we're celebrating is because this was birthed, nurtured, mm-hmm. created, matured by the very people that's using it. <laughs> so, and so we, that model is what you see here. And uh, we say it's a, re, we're, it's a rebrand called ReCity Lab. Mm-hmm. We, wanted, we wanted you to, to feel that you're in the lab. Mm-hmm. You're not in a co-working no more. You're in the lab. You're creating. You're, you're modifying. Right. You're, you're establishing. So it's going to be a whole total rebrand. Mm-hmm. So the building's going to look different than what you see right now. The, the, the people who want to be in this space are going to be totally different. When we started, we found out that so many people wanted to be a part of this. We had all the institutions, the universities, mm-hmm. the hospitals, the government, the research institutions, all of them want to be a part of this space because they indirectly touch the community. But here, we are centering. It's a community-centric hub. Yeah. So the voice that you see in here is raw community of people. Mm. The reason why that's valuable, because over time in the triangle, we have hijacked the term community engagement. Mm. So we make community whatever we define it to be. Mm. Uh, now, to, it, to, to integrity, in the academic world, it's very difficult to define community. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> post-college, yeah. but it's, it, you, all of us sharing space. 
account. Now, as a kid, uh, this tension, you just, you, you, you just basically said this tension is always, but my mom and my father always had um, uh, a very uh, rigid uh, sort of living quarters. So there were certain things you had to do at a certain time, both of them in the military, my mom's in the army, dad was in the navy. Uh, and it, it, was a, it was a high faith environment. So everything was, you know, we got in a fight, we had to go and apologize, hugs, you know, we had to pray for each other, you know, it was like, oh. so it was a very high, rigid, high faith environment. Um, it was only when I got older that that pain and that struggle and that harm I see, I talk to my brothers and sisters every day. All six of us are in communication at some point or another every day. Um, and, and we have, um, we have created, over time, I, I morphed into relationships with one of the siblings, depending on my stage of life. Mm -hmm. So I have an older sister that was like mom. Her name is Renee. She's in, she's in Italy. She was in Rome, now she's in Milan, I believe. She married an Italian, as you can read over there. Um, and uh, she has two children that have went to school everywhere. Egypt, London, California. So she is a world traveler. Her kids are world travelers. Mm -hmm. Um, they speak multiple languages, um, and she did that as a single mom, you know, as a single mom. So that marriage was a new marriage. So she was a risk taker that said, you got to you gotta go and get it. Like, you, this, this is very rigid, safe, you got to go and get dressed. Uh, so then I have a brother in Atlanta. He's the first one. I said, I'm going to be like him. He's the first one that had a book out. And we used to have, like, back in the day, we had to buy encyclopedias. Now Google will destroy that whole thing. <laughs> but you used, to, you used to have to buy encyclopedias. And he was, he was the first human being in my memory that I've seen open a book and, like, highlight and read. And my sister, to her credit, if she's watching this, she would read romance novels. I just didn't see them in my brain. <laughs> but, the, but the encyclopedia, um, he was the first person to get it. He, well, he would have us in the backyard. This is early Mac. This is the tender Mac. Mm -hmm. He would have us in the, in the backyard running plays, and so that's how I got into football. Mm -hmm. And then he would, he was the same person that had this very rigid sort of, this is what it means to be a leader. This is what it means to manage your time. This is everything that he journeyed into. He wanted to be an academic. Mm -hmm. I followed his sort of life vision. So Corey was the only boy, but he was around like, I can be just like this guy. Mm -hmm. Then there's Clarence. We're all born in two. So Renee and Corey are the oldest two. And me and Clarence. Clarence is like the model. Like he's wearing clothes I would never wear. Like he's designing clothes I would never wear. Um, he's probably at the climax of his career. I mean, he's designing for Disney, he's designing for Tommy, he's designing for LVMH. He just won a national award. He's I mean he's on another planet right now. I mean, he's literally, you know, at the climax. His art is selling everywhere. I mean, he's just, you know, and he <laughs> He'd go into the store and they're like, man, where do you get this? And Elle said, nothing. So, <laughs> so, so he's second like another, like where people are recognizing that this is like a different quality of like fashion. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm so proud of him because that was the kid that had a hard time reading in school. Yeah. That was the kid that had a hard time. And they were like, man, this is going to be in front. That's going to have to get a fast paying job. So he defied all odds. And, and he and he now is an author of three books. So he is like he is like you know. Uh, but me and him for a long time were close. Yeah. Our dream is to work in, or live in the same city. Now we all live everywhere. So he's in New York, uh, Miami, and I'm uh, uh, in China. He, COVID ended the China journey, but he's in China. Um, then underneath me, then there's me. He is a biochemist, and he is, he runs the um, he runs the Ferguson startup. So after he leaves, he runs the Ferguson yeah. startup, created a community startup wow. that allows for the community to come in, create, design, learn, do homework. It's like almost like a community center that's a startup. Wow. He is the uh, store manager for that for that brand. Um, so he he teaches at HBCU. And then my sister, my youngest sister, uh, Charlotte, she's in Jacksonville, and uh, and she is uh, an entrepreneur. She's built, she's she's done a little bit of everything. 
So it was two, 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 and I'm in the middle. And so, but that's my friend. Those are my, those are my closest friends. And so, as a child, you know, back in the, 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 the cramped room, but as an adult, that's my life. That's my best life. Those are, those are my, uh, my friends, my closest friends. You know what? I, I'm envious of that. Uh, my, my upbringing was almost the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got two old, much older sisters, much too old to say that. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there's an 11 and 16 year old gap between yeah. them and myself. So I grew up as an only child in an era without social media. Mm -hmm. I found it difficult nice. to connect with uh, folks and still to this day. So my question is, uh, you, you have a son yourself. Yes. Uh, coming from such a large family where he's not seeing that directly, yes. how do you share your family and those experiences with him to make sure that he feels connected. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great question because that's a journey. When when Miles was born, um, Kiera was uh, alone. Her family couldn't make it here. So it really was just me and her. During the birth, it was just me and Kiera. There was no, there was no network, there was no community, just me and Kiera. And so he was birthed alone. <laughs> he literally was birthed alone. Um, and then Pierre, over time, began to create these relationships and networks that allowed him to build partnerships and relationships outside of the home. Um, and then uh, he has a very extensive cousin network. Hey, listen, got ice in the veins when you made so frigid. Still in the kill brain cells when you hit it. All the pills when you pop that, pop that, pop that. Don't stop. Get it, get it started. We the fighters. Works, that works. So, it's your boy, Bro Smith. We are here at the Raleigh Convention Center at the Inspired event. I've heard you are the head lady in charge. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so my name is Crystal, well, my name is Crystal. I go by Crystal the Muse. Um, we've been doing Inspired. I've been with SP doing Inspired since conception. Um, it's been a ride. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a ride, but I host, I produce, I consult, you know, so Renaissance woman, so to speak. How long does it take to actually get all of this together? Like, do you start months in advance years in advance so yes all of the above uh, depending on how intricate the show is going to be it might take six months or more to plan it out completely and so this show in particular believe it or not it's been in the making for the last two years well since about november 2021 um, since our last show so we've been building this show up since then it has changed and evolved yeah. over time getting here, but ultimately we're here. <laughs> we're here. What are you most ah, oh, oh, coming up in here? Yeah, you know what's coming? Speak what's of the devil. Here? You looking dapper we're too. Here. We're back on the Bro Code Show with Dr. Terrence Ruth. Dr. Ruth, before the break, uh, you brought up bug words. We always talk about words mattering, and one of the topics that we dig deep on here on the Bro Code Show is men's mental health. Right? And we talk about wellness is the new cool. <laughs> Right? And there's four pillars in that space, spiritual, financial, mental, and physical. I want to talk a little bit more about, we know that you're educated. We know that you love to read. You are a scholar. We know all of those things. But in the midst of that, you have a wife and a son. Then you took on a responsibility of not only giving back to the community, but wanting to lead the community in the space of becoming mayor. Right. First and foremost, you know, when we talk as a child, when we dream, I, I would like to know if, if that was even something that you even fathomed. Um, but how did you walk through that from a mental space? You know, because you're a husband and a father first. Yeah, no, it's a really good question. And, and I want to uh, start that answer mm. with um, the idea that you are now going to see how people see you. And so that, that dynamic is a little, it's a little, um, it's a little uh, um, rough to think about. Sure. Um, how people see you, and you see what people see about you. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it forces you to reflect on things that you did not see mm -hmm. that is now made visible, um, the things that you knew were mm -hmm. there, um, and also, you get to see how far your decisions impact someone else. Mm. And uh, that's not always visible if you're just living your day-to-day -day life. Your videos sure. are touching somebody you would never meet. Right. So imagine if you met all of those individuals. Right. You know, so it's like, so it's, it's, it's that, that's a different way to evaluate mm. your life, the 
different way to evaluate um, impact or a different way to evaluate um, uh, what it means to be mentally healthy in mm. this space. Uh, so for me, there's several uh, layers. The first layer I want to start with is my, is my father. And I, and I know um, that men's mental health is significant. Sure. Uh, my father um, grew up in rural North Carolina. Um, and he always tells his story from rural North, North Carolina and escaping to the big city of Raleigh. He mm. was, this was an escape. Mm. Raleigh mm. was an escape for him. <laughs> uh, and it all had to do with mental health. He was trying to get to a healthy place sure. so that he could be a healthy person and live a healthy life. Um, and so it was ironic that years later, his son is running for mayor of Raleigh. So, yeah. But he was escaping to a, a healthy place, but he mm. never talked about that. Yeah. We had to learn about my father's mental health journey and his death. Mm. We didn't learn about it in his life. And so for us, we're trying to reflect on what we remember. We're trying to reflect on the stories my mom is sharing. And we had the beautiful opportunity to hear some of the stories pre my mom mm. of my father. And the stories are important because it, it, it helps us understand what we inherit right. in our mental that's, health. That's like absolutely we, right. Like there's some things that we, we, we're going we're gonna to borrow mm -hmm. <laughs> from, from, our, from, from my, my father. Mm -hmm. So um, knowing that story, knowing what he was escaping to and from, um, I have a son. Mm -hmm. And so um, what does it mean for me to uh, create conditions that allow for him to um, uh, have a better mental health sure. um, um, journey? And so for me, I, I had to um, also give him a moment to tell me how he sees me. Right. And I didn't grow up that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't care how you, <laughs> I don't care how I felt. Um, uh, my opinion on how my parents were raising me wasn't as significant as it is for yeah. him now to tell me. Mm -hmm. uh, so if he's hurt, he can say it. Mm -hmm. If he's happy, he can say it, and it's not awkward. Right. When I was young, it was awkward. It was awkward to say sorry, it was awkward to hug, it was mm -hmm. awkward to, to be in an emotional moment, right? Like, even mm -hmm. if it's good or bad, it was mm -hmm. just an awkward thing, you know? Um, Miles is fully confident in those moments. Um, he expressed those moments, and then he, and if you're not in the moment with him, he'll like, say, what's wrong? Right. <laughs> right. What's wrong? So I'm happy because he's going to have a, a, a stronger mental health right. journey than I have. Mm -hmm. um, and that came through several ways. One, um, it had, we had to be transparent mm -hmm. in front of my own, and that's hard to do mm -hmm. because, again, I didn't live that journey. Uh, so part of what we do is we go to counseling with him. So he sees us in counseling. He's a part of that conversation. He's a part of the struggle. Mm -hmm. He's not put in a kid's corner somewhere. <laughs> you know, like he, he's brought in. We're trying to normalize. What does it mean to not just exercise outside and eat right, but to mm -hmm. also exercise your emotions and mm -hmm. your, your mental health and then do it in front of him yeah. so that when somebody don't have it, they're like he's advising them to go and get mm -hmm. mental health mm -hmm. and rather than the reverse. Because it could be pressure sure. to hold that in. <laughs> it can be pressure socially to say, hey, man, you, you know, you're showing too much, uh, you know, emotion. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to build up his resiliency to live that way, even if society saying no. And so we, we do it by him being present with us in, in those moments. I love it, man. I love it. No, that, that's impactful to hear. Um, I'm a new father, you know, 40 year old father. Wow. And then EK has uh, <laughs> rejoined the group in fatherhood as well, uh, added to his letter. Uh, and so I, I always like to take in these moments where I can learn from other fathers, given that I've, I've been around children for a while, but just never internalized how yeah. important these conversations are now. So when what you're modeling for your son, at what age did you start instilling that transparency, that openness, and, and having those conversations? Um, I can only reflect on that. Now, I, I journal. So I literally, every day I write down and I journal. Um, and so there's things that he observed when he was younger that I see now. So his birthday was a couple of days ago, and one of his gifts, he wanted a journal. Hmm. I would have never have asked for that. Yeah. Yeah. A comic yeah, book, right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, he, so he's, he's willing to write hmm. his thoughts and his emotions. And so I, I say that because even at that age, he's watching. He's watching everything. And so Miles was watching everything. He was watching me read, he was watching me study, he was watching me. So when I'm preparing a speech, I'm usually walking around the house talking mm -hmm. out loud. So he's watching that whole process. Mm -hmm. um, the way me and his mom wrestle with either great or not so great things, he's watching. Mm -hmm. 
So everything is a moment in which he's, now when he gets older, he can share what he's learned from those years of observation. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's when it became cognizant to me, when he did what it said. Or when we watched the old videos. Mm -hmm. And he knew very, in every detail when Kobe um, broke his Achilles. Obsessed with Kobe, man, because this yeah. dude, <laughs> he could barely speak, but he was talking about Kobe's injury mm -hmm. with full detail. Mm -hmm. And so, I all the pictures you can see, like the Cowboys in the background on the screen. Mm -hmm. So this, he's playing football now. So there's things I transferred to him that I didn't tell him to do. I didn't say it. And so there's some things that that he observed as a kid that he's now telling me, either in his action or his words, uh, that was either healthy or unhealthy. He's telling me right now. And he's around it's around seven, eight, or nine. I can now hear what he observed and make some auto corrections in this moment. <laughs> um, but he he was observing for a while, and I didn't realize it. Mm. I didn't realize he was observing. Mm. So before we uh, started shooting today, you mentioned physical balance. Yeah. yeah. So so one of the things that we're working on is the balance mm. of the spiritual, emotional, physical, financial, yeah. the complete mm -hmm. yeah. wellness. Yeah. But you were talking about you and your wife and having trainers. That's right. Tell us about that. No, it's, it's, it, it really came to it. We're always trying to find moments where we can do things together. So part of that um, was being more deliberate around date night. When you're campaigning, you're always in someone's home or you're at somebody's event mm -hmm. or there's an invite in the mail. or there's a, You're always somewhere else and it's always about someone else. Right. Um, but we, what we said we need a time where it's about us. Mm -hmm. And so we had to put a date night down, but also during COVID, things shut down, and we realized that we were, we had strategy for spiritual health, we had strategy for financial health, we had strategy for mental, but we didn't have strategy mm. for physical. Um, we just made assumptions that AIDS will take care of it, yeah. or, or our athletic years early will take care yeah. of it. And so we made a decision to go into workout together. And mm. so we began to work out together two days, um, out the week, Wednesday morning, Friday morning. And um, it's a grueling workout, but we're doing it together. Um, and we're now seeing the difference mm -hmm. in our bodies. And I, I, for a long time, I underestimated mm -hmm. that element. Mm -hmm. I underestimated that element tremendously. I underestimated that element to headaches, yep. to stress, mm -hmm. to, to, to what I eat. Yep. Um, I literally undermined all of that to academic health. I, mm -hmm. I wanted to... I want to spend all my time reading and studying, but if my body can't move, mm -hmm. or my body can't think straight, or if there's migraines, there's headaches, there's toxins that I have in my body, I didn't appreciate that until 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and it was in 2020 that began to, to, to move up the priority of physical health. Um, and then alongside that was what we eat as well. I love um, that. That was helpful for Miles um, on his end, uh, for him to see that as well. I love that. And to your point, and, and digging a little bit deeper into the wholeness of a person, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how the relationship with your father impacted that. Yeah. So my father, um, he was a man that uh, made a living off of his hands and um, and off of uh, fixing. So he, he was a fixer. So, so he would he would fix cars. Mm. Um, he was in the military, and so he he lived. He worked at the VA yeah. and worked on boilers. So it was all about physical strength and ability to make something that was once broken yeah. well. Um, and then he, we, my my academic journey is his battle with cancer. It, he found out when I was during my bachelor's graduation, yeah. and he passed away after my PhD. So my literally my academic journey is my father's cancer journey, mm -hmm. and cancer slowly took his muscles away. Mm -hmm. It slowly took his ability to fix what was broken. Right. He had to retire. The whole thing it slowly mm -hmm. took all that away, mm -hmm. and it left somebody who was improving his mental health. My father began kissing, hugging mm -hmm. the grandkids, and he began to say, "I love you." Mm -hmm. And he began to. His, it's almost like the it's almost like it it shredded everything and said this mm. is the flower that was hiding in all its semen, and he became a whole different human being in his last two to three years of life, um, and so that two to three years taught me everything, taught me a lifetime of lessons, and 
the grandkids would never know the dad that I am. When they, when they think of grandpa, they're thinking like, man, this guy is unbelievable. Mm. My sister wrote a book um, based off of Miles, my son. He, he would always say, my father passed away immediately after the, about two to three years, he would say, oh, my grandpa was here. Hmm. Every statement. <laughs> And he was like two or three. We're not even talking about like, you know, not talking about like a, you know, he was like, oh, my grandpa. So my sister wrote a book on oh, my grandpa. Was here. Mm. That was the name of the book. And so my father in his last years of life became the most healthy I've ever seen him. Mm. Because his body wasn't to him like that. His cancer wasn't to him like that. Mm. But his mind, his spiritual mm. health, his mental health was at mm. its maximum. Yes. And so um, there could be a moment where those are inverse. Yeah. And there's some things that you're freed from mm -hmm. when all you have to focus on is your mind, relationship, the health of relationship. Mm -hmm. And he was the most dependent at that moment on his family. Wow. Yeah. So, so, so uh, you touched on something. First of all, earlier you mentioned vulnerability. Yeah. And it's such a superpower for men. Yeah. But you're now mentioning how dad changed yeah. later on. There's this stigma, especially in African American, African -American uh, communities where black men are nurturing. That's right. That's right. Can you talk about like, cause that's like for, for us. Yeah. I, I have my children yeah. young. Yeah. So I'm yeah. reparenting yeah. in that way. Yeah. And it, it does so much wonders yeah. for them and their health. Yeah. So so for me, my getaway, my um, my paradise, my pause in the day, is when Miles is home and he's like, Dad. I'm 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 Bron and you Kobe and he's we on his little basketball mm. hoop. Now I don't, I don't take no mercy. Mm. <laughs> so, so he will get dunked on in that room. <laughs> but mm -hmm. to him, that 20 mm. minutes, yep. that 30 minutes, mm -hmm. even if it's five minutes, I say, hey, I'm gonna put the timer on. We got five minutes. Mm -hmm. It's everything. Mm -hmm. It's everything. So I have to take a trip. After this, I gotta take a trip. And he's like, Dad, when you coming back? To have a kid say, when you coming back? Mm. Those moments. He's like, how am I going to eat? And he's not talking about food. How am I going to eat while you're gone? Mm -hmm. How am I going to How am I going to be nurtured in that way mm -hmm. while you're gone? And so that's one thing I didn't cut during the campaign. Mm -hmm. I didn't cut Miles' time at all. Mm -hmm. um, I realized how important he is to me. Mm -hmm. I realized how important that time is for him. Now he's thinking, oh, this is the only time I get to get with my dad. But for me, I'm not thinking about NC State. I'm not mm -hmm. thinking about campaigning. I'm not thinking about community. I'm not thinking about nothing. I'm thinking about Miles. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about Kiara. Mm -hmm. And for me, that moment allows for me to get healthy again, too. Miles thinks it's for him, but even for me, that allows for me to say, okay, I'm home. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's everything. We're, 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 um, we're in a time where I'm allowed to nurture him, but he now, he's nine, he can say, yeah. Dad, something's bothering me. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about it. I said, I don't know, man. It was a tough day. Like, I could be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, I'm, I, I don't want to be Superman. Right. I don't want to be human to you. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to think that you have to be, <laughs> I want to be human to you. Mm -hmm. And if I'm human to you and I'm honest and I can just show you how to get through rough moments, I think you'd be better prepared mm -hmm. to be a Superman one day. Mm -hmm. But I would rather be human to you than to be perfect to you. Mm -hmm. So he asked the question, he said, hey, Dad, what's wrong? I love this question because he's now have a default of what a healthy dad looks like mm -hmm. and what an unhealthy dad looks like. I think that's healthy. I think he can say something's not right, and he can bring it up in conversation. I wasn't allowed to do that. Mm. My dad would be silent. I said, I said, Dad, and if I, and if, I if I say something twice and he's silent, I just go about with that. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it moving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Keep it moving. Yeah. So um, I, 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 love, I, I love the mm. ability to be able to um, nurture and to be nurtured too. Mm. And I've never seen it as a two-way street. I always seen it as a one-way. I love it. You, did you have something else? No, I'm, I'm soaking on that. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to take in all these lessons. Um, what what is outside of the, the family element? What is next for you? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you're, you're doing a, a number of different projects. Um, you've been very influential in a number of different spaces. But where do you see yourself in the next five, ten years? Yeah. So at the core of me, that I went through this journey where I. I, I I reorganized my values, like life values. Mm -hmm. I, took, I took about six or seven terms, worked with a small group of people, dropped those terms down to five, mm -hmm. worked with a small group of people and trying to get even smaller than that. Um, and then I linked those values to a definition that I created that reflects Tim's. Mm -hmm. And then 
but one or two of those are aspirational. They mm -hmm. don't exist yet, but I, I want to get to that space. Um, so for me, I try to answer that question through those values. And, and what feeds me and keeps me excited is when I surround myself around people who are empowering others who don't feel empowered. Mm. And so for me, when I read, I read mostly um, nonfiction. I very rarely read fiction books. Most of my books are nonfiction. I'm, do, I'm normally reading about history and stories. Mm -hmm. But history often, if you read it, it documents empowered people. <laughs> like literally, you know, America comes, and they're like, hey, we're gonna start this new thing. <laughs> and we're gonna, and with this new experiment, yeah. um, you're gonna be able to use, um, you're gonna be able to uh, keep your faith, you're gonna be able to have a voice, you're gonna be able to elevate freedom, you're gonna be able to elect your president, you're gonna be able to, so in this experiment, mm -hmm. right, um, you're talking about a series of empowerment moments. Mm. <laughs> and so for me, I would love to um, see that fulfilled um, to all people. Mm. Um, and, um, and I think our, our country has yet to finish that book. And I would mm. love to be a part of a group of people who allow for that book to go as well. I love it. You, um, words matter. Empower people, empower people. Yeah. yeah. Well, we gotta wrap this thing <laughs> up, right man. Like, Since we started the show, right? yeah. I'll be around town now because we post on social media no. so much. Yeah. And people will be like, I know you. Mm. Mm. So I wonder if they know us, mm. you're probably famous. Mm. Can we say that's true? I, I, I would say, so there's, there's, two, there's two answers, I, I, and I'm not trying to get around that your, your question. Mm. So there's people who know truth a person mm. who's promoting a certain uh, type of leadership mm -hmm. that decentralizes one figure and centralizes a community as a whole to be empowered to change a city for the better. And then, let me, let me <laughs> ask you a question. No. Everywhere you go, people know you. Mm. you. How do you get away from where I, you have to be yeah. on all, all the time? time. No, that's a, that's, yeah. that's really good. That's really good. That's really good question. Um, so, there's several areas in which I just find a pocket to escape. Some people want to go to some foreign geographical location. Mm. But I literally get lost in two things. One is deep conversation with great thinkers. I love to be on the phone and we're wrestling with deep concepts. That's something I get excited about. Call me anytime and we are jumping into it. The second thing is a really good text mm. that extends my mind. I could be there all day. So I have an electric car. I sit at the charging station, and so it changes how you live, because you gotta sit at the charging station. Mm -hmm. I have no problem, because my mm -hmm. escape is that text. So somebody sending me text, man, you gotta see this, or, so I have a network, I have an underground world of people who are feeding me. Mm -hmm. um, and it, we don't need a billboard, we don't need, we don't need, we don't need to see each other's faces. But those are my moments where I get light. Uh, those are my life moments, and they don't always require FaceTime. Yeah. Mm. I love it. Well, there you go. We're going to drop the mic. We got plenty more with Terrence Ruth on the Bro Code Show. We'll be right back. Back on the Bro Code Show, as you can see, we're switched it up. We are wrapping things up with Dr. Terrence Ruth. I think we got one more pressing question, man. What you got, Bro so, Kirk? So, so everybody on our team is sneakerheads. Yeah. Every, every time we see you, you have on different Converse sneakers. Talk to us. Yeah, I I, I try my hardest to minimize distraction. Mm. So what I say is communicated well to those who need to hear. And so for some people, a suit is a distraction. And then for others, 
a speaker is an invitation. So I, I try to I try to balance that out well so that I'm talking to the right audience. I like that. That's a T-shirt all by itself, right? I like that. I love it. I like well, that. Dr. Ruth, words matter. And before the show, we asked you, what is a word that you would use to describe yourself or a word that you use in a time of trouble? Well, you use the word student. Yeah. Uh, we want to do something special for you. But before we do that, I, we got to ask, why student? Yeah, so my entire life, um, I've always asked questions. And I've, I haven't always been a speaker. Mm. So for the first part of my life, I was silent. Uh, but I always ask questions. Right. And I think if you live a life of questions, one, you stay humble. Mm. Um, two, you continue to grow. And then three, you remain human. And so I, I'd rather be a student in any setting than, than to be a master um, over people. And so um, I'd rather take that disposition of student than anything else. I love it. With the work that we do with kids, I always tell them to be forever learners. Mm. You know, there's always in every capacity, every space, regardless of where you're at, something that you could pick up yeah. and put in your your your, your, your profit pocket, yeah. right, or your tool belt, right? But, but uh, if, you, if you think of all the great thinkers, they mm. always were humbled by the volume of knowledge that they still have to consume. Mm. So very rarely did they put a stake in the ground and say, "I'm finished." <laughs> I so love that. Is you, is you, knowledge humbles you. Yeah. To knowing that there's so much you have to still learn. Mm, just getting started. So we got something special for you. So, Dr. Wolf, we give away on our show these You Matter $2 bills. Mm. I, you're a little familiar, but <laughs> we wrote student on yours. Uh, and, and, you know, we really want to thank you. Yeah. Uh, just thank sitting you. down and talking to you, man, you. it makes us think sure. differently, deeper. Thank you. And so we, we got this here for you. It says uh, Broco on the back, and it says student on the front. So. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, I appreciate it. Yeah. And just like that $2 bill, you're rare and unique, brother. Thank so, you know, I know you have many awards and accolades and plaques and things of that nature, but hopefully that will make it to the wall and Thank you remember you. the bro code experience. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Well, we didn't do this before, but I'm going to put you on the spot. So we got another segment <laughs> called Calling Them Out. And this <laughs> segment, right here, we got yeah, we to get them, right? Yeah, got so <laughs> in this segment, uh, first, let me back up. Can, is it safe to say that you have enjoyed for the second Third, fourth yeah. time of bro code <laughs> yeah. experience. Yes, yes. I have, I have to say, every time we have a conversation, yeah. uh, I always enjoy the moment in which I can have all brothers sharing and being authentic and vulnerable in a space that others could see. Mm. Um, they're, they're not, that, that is something that is not usual. It's and not, so I just appreciate y'all yeah. creating that moment. Yeah, man. Transparency and vulnerability is a big deal. It's actually a superpower. Yes. You know, yes. and it took life moments to get me to a place to appreciate that. Wow. So, wow. Uh, just speaking from my personal yes. journey. Yes. So, yeah. So, let's get to the point. Uh, <laughs> is there other individuals in your network, your prethra of network, that would appreciate a bro code experience? If so, that's your camera right there. Yeah, Calling them out right now. Let them know they need to be on this show. I'm calling out Mickey Fern. Mickey Fern, uh, I'm sending the bro code your way. Um, please have pound cake ready. Please. They already know that you can cook. Please. <laughs> but I'm calling out Mickey Fern, great brother, um, great thinker. Um, and he has processed the values of his life and has mm. written it down. And so you get a chance to not just meet an amazing person, sure. but an amazing reflection of that person. Mm. And not that the conversation should stop, but it should yes. progress. Yes. Like we're still having the same conversation on the same level. Yes. You know, and there's pockets to your point. So we see pockets with no consistency. That's the difference between a moment and a movement. Yeah. So I, think, I think our city shows it too. Yeah. If you really look at That's it, right. I see it on social. When I, right. I see some of the rooms, mm -hmm. not as diverse That's as I right. would think. Mm -hmm. I don't That's see right. a lot of black men. That's right. Where are they? But they That's speak right. it though. They they quick to say we were having this conversation right. earlier. I'm like, look, when, when, when I don't I don't get it. I really <laughs> don't, man. I really I don't. See, so I, what what what's what's baffling to me? This idea that I always hear, oh, we can't find. Right, 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 right. And I, right I, I here. Said, I what? Said, I said it's just, you're not looking. Yeah, it's not looking. Oh, you're, oh you're looking for a particular type. You haven't found that that you put in the pocket because there's an intimidation that comes with certain energies. I, I always see outputs and outcomes as a result of inputs. Yeah. Mm. So what what is the input that's creating this outcome? And mm. until you ask that question, no, you're not going to find. Mm. So, and uh, what is it that you're actually looking for? Yeah. First of all, Dr. Ruth, thank you. 
right, for being on the show. Thank you for taking the time. Not, you know, you're no longer a guest anymore, right? You know, you, you one of the bros, you family. But nonetheless, thank you. Thank you for, let them know it won't last time. What's the, do you remember the address to this space? It's 112 Broadway Street, Durham. Bull City, stand up, yes, yes. right? And the name of it? It's ReCity in, in ReCity Labs. Awesome, awesome. So we always end the show the same way on a positive vibe. Usually I would look up a quote, but you're a thinker, you love Baldwin, so let the people know what quote are we ending with tonight? I'm going to end with somebody who's more meaningful to me than Baldwin, and that's my grandmother, who, mm. um, after this show, very personal, I'm actually going to go uh, see the end of her life. And so mm. she used to say, let the words of my mouth and the very meditations of my heart be acceptable. And so for me, I want my actions to be secondary to having acceptable words and acceptable thoughts. Right there, it's your boy, Bro Troy. Bro Kirk. Bro Smith. And we are Bro Code. Hey, yeah. The life. I said it's the life. Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, yo, I see y'all out there living y'all life, man. Ha <laughs> ha. Live it up. Uh, I went from sleeping on the bunk inside a cage to home ownership. While people was afraid of that life, I was condoning it. It helped that I was raised with a mice known to roam. If you got it out the mud, I slept there. I was homeless. Living was only torture, and I could have done without it. But God rerouted, and now my mama the proudest when performing at events. She be screaming the loudest. We done came a long way.